right, so I'm going to record um, read aloud for today. So we kind of stopped in the middle of a chapter before we left for Thanksgiving. We've got the dachshunds tomorrow, Marisol said. Yep. I pointed to the miniature zigzag staircase she was building. Where's that going? Antonio's old room, when he heads off to college this fall. Or maybe Luis's. His room is full of boxes. You're like an only child, I said. It's kind of boring, Marisol said, pushing a strand of hair behind her ear. There's no one to fight with. It's too quiet. Sounds nice. I like your apartment. There's always something going on. Sometimes it's just me and Paula for days on end, she rolled her eyes. Marisol's dad was a salesman and her mom was a pilot. They traveled a lot. So Paula, an older woman, often stayed with Marisol. Marisol refused to call her a nanny or a babysitter or a caregiver. She was just Paula. Marisol grabbed a tape measure to check the height of the staircase she was making. I'm going to attach the staircase to the wall, see? Like so. And then put shelves way up high for the cats to climb to. It'll be cat paradise. Speaking of cats, <clears throat> I bent down to fill in the hole Aretha had made. The sand was soft and dry. Did I ever tell you? I hesitated, then pushed on. Did I ever tell you I had an imaginary friend when I was little? Really? Me too. Her name was Whoops. She had red hair and was extremely naughty. I blamed her for everything. Who was yours? He was a cat. A big cat. I don't remember much about him. You should never forget your imaginary friend. How come? What if you need him someday? Marisol reached for a piece of wood. I remember everything about Whoops. She liked to eat Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> Why? I pretended to gag. Probably because I like Brussels sprouts. You never told me that. I may have to reconsider our friendship. Because of whoops, were the Brussels sprouts. She yanked a nail out of a plank with her hammer. Hey, new bat fact. In Austin, Texas, they have the world's largest urban bat colony. Like a million and a half of them. When they fly out at night, you can see them on the airport radar screens. Very cool, I said. Miss Malone would love seeing them. Marisol and I both had Miss Malone for fourth grade. She taught all subjects, but she loved science best of all. Biology especially. We chatted about bats while we watched Aretha dig another hole. Finally, I said, well, gotta go. I hooked Aretha too early. She licked my cheek with a sand-covered tongue. Felt like a cat's. Did whoops ever, you know, I made myself ask the question. Did she ever come back after you outgrew her? Marisol didn't answer right away. Sometimes she just let a question sit for a while, like she needed some time to get acquainted with it. I wish she would come back, Marisol said, gazing at me. I think you'd like her. I nodded. Yeah, I guess I could overlook the Brussels sprouts thing. Jackson? Yep. You're not really moving, are you? I studied her question the way she'd studied mine. Probably not. I said because it was easy and easy was all I could manage. Aretha and I were almost to the front yard when Marissa called. It needs a name. You mean the statue? Yeah, something unique. What do you want its name to be, I asked. She didn't answer right away. She took her time. Finally, she said, Crenshaw would be a good name for a cat, I think. <clears throat> 38. I crossed the street twice. I looked back. Marisol waited. Crenshaw. It must have been written on the bottom of the statue. By my teacher, or my mom, or me. There's always a logical explanation, I told myself. Always. <clears throat> that night, I sat on my mattress, staring at what was left of my bedroom. My old bed, shaped like a red race car, the one I'd outgrown years, ages ago, was in pieces. A sticker on the headboard said $25 or best offer. Dents in the carpeting hinted at what used to be there. A cube where my nightstand should have been. A rectangle where my dresser once stood. My mom and dad came in after Robin was asleep. How you doing, bud? My dad asked. Definitely roomier, huh? It's like camping out, I said. Without the mosquitoes, said my mom. She handed me a plastic mug of water. I kept it by my bed in case I got thirsty in the middle of the night. She'd been doing that for as long as I could remember. The mug, which had a faded picture of Thomas the Tank Engine on it, was probably nearly as old as I was. My dad touched the mattress with his cane. Next bed, let's make it more serious. Not a race car, my mom nodded. Maybe a Volvo, said my dad. How about just a bed, I asked. Absolutely. My mom leaned over and combed her fingers through my hair. A bed bed. We'll probably make some bucks at the sale, my dad said. So there's that. They're just things, my mom said quietly. We can always get new things. It's okay. I like all the space, I said. I think Aretha does too. And Robin can practice batting without knocking anything over. Both my parents smiled. For a few minutes, neither spoke. All right, we're out of here, my mom finally said. As eternally, my dad said, You know, you're such a big help, Jackson. You never complain. You're always ready to pitch in. We really appreciate that. My mom blew me a kiss. He's pretty amazing, she agreed. She winked at my dad. Let's keep him around. They closed the door. I had one lamp left. His light carved a yellow frown on my carpet. I closed my eyes. I imagined our things spread out on the lawn tomorrow. 
My mom was right, of course. They were just things, bits of plastic, wood, cardboard, and steel, bunches of atoms. I knew all too well that there were people in the world who didn't have Monopoly games or race car beds. I had a roof over my head. I had food most of the time. I had clothes and blankets and a dog and a family. Still, I felt twisted inside, like I'd swallowed a knotted up rope. It wasn't about losing my stuff. Well, okay, maybe that was a little part of it. It wasn't about feeling different from other kids. Well, okay, maybe that was a part of it too. What bothered me most, though, was that I couldn't fix anything. I couldn't control anything. It was like driving a bumper car without a steering wheel. I kept getting slammed, and I just had to sit there and hold on tight. Bam! Where we were going? Were we going to have enough to eat tomorrow? Bam! Were we going to be able to pay the rent? Bam! Would I go to the same school in the fall? Bam! Would it happen again? I took deep breaths in, out, in, out. My fists clenched and unclenched. I tried not to think about Crenshaw on the TV or the dog cookie I'd stolen. Then, just the way I'd taken the cookie without understanding why, without thinking about the consequences, without any reason, I grabbed my mug and hurled it against the wall. Bam! It splintered into shards of cracked plastic. I liked the noise it made. I waited for my parents to return and ask what's wrong, to yell at me for breaking something, but no one came. Water trickled down the wall, slowly down the wall, slowly fading like an old map of a faraway river.